My name is Sofia Garcia and I will be presenting the topic empirical bootstrap. This is my final video project for Math 32. I am in lecture section one and I am in discussion section six. What is an empirical bootstrap? An empirical bootstrap is when we estimate f by the empirical distribution function, the corresponding bootstrap principle, where f is a distribution and the data set is a random sample. Recall, the central limit theorem states that the distribution a sample approximates a normal distribution, also known as a bell curve. As the sample size becomes larger, assuming that all sample sizes are identical in size and regardless of the population distribution shape. What does empirical bootstrap mean? Bootstrapping uses resampling to generate new samples from the original sample. This estimates the sample mean, the more values you have, the better. It reshuffles values to extend the application of an unknown situation by assuming the existing trends will continue. The realization of the bootstrap sample is called the bootstrap data set and is denoted by x1 star, x2 star, up to xn star to, string, to distinguish it from the original data set x1, x2, xn. For the centered sample mean, the simulation procedure is as follows. So you're going to find uh, that uh, sample mean that is denoted by mu star by using mu star equals uh, lowercase and bar n equals x plus 1, x plus 2, up to uh, x of n over n. and um, to do a second sample, you will denote the next mean value by using uh, lowercase bar, uh, lowercase x bar star n equals x star one plus x star two all the way up to x star n over n. And you will repeat this process many times to find the new samples because it will shuffle the values and you will find new means like that for the data set. When would I use the empirical bootstrap in the real world? world? Suppose we estimate the expectation mu corresponding to f by lowercase x bar n equals 203.9. 209.3. Can we say how far away 209.3 is from the true expectation mu? Well, the answer is no, because in a situation like this, the measurements and their corresponding average are subject to randomness, like I mentioned before. And we can't actually say how far the average will be from mu. So we have to use an approximation such as the probability of capital X and bar minus mu is less than five. So you can see how close you get to the average of the data set, n equals 272. And we're gonna use the famous example of the old faithful uh, geyser. And the reason why it's less than five is because we want the sample mean to deviate less than five, like, more or less than five from mu. Here we're doing greater than since it's the um, absolute value. Again, the direct, uh, the direct computation of this is impossible. So we have to use the following equation in order to find an approximation of this. And here we have plugged in 203, uh, 209.3 as mu. Again, it's a lot of data to do. So this is just an approximation. We are given here that the amount of uh, sample values that we're taking are a thousand. And so numerically, what we can do is find the sample mean, uh, the sample median, the, uh, the sample variance, the standard deviation, the expectation, and the median and uh, the hundredth percentile since uh, the variance as well. Oh, 
yeah, the numerically, you find the sample mean, sample median, sample variance, and standard deviation, because these are approximations. You would have to use uh, programming or coding to uh, find the actual uh, to find the actual mean, like our studio. And the figure on your left here shows you what this would look like if you did this by hand, which is the bunch of bars. And if you did this on R, one on the right shows you a bell curve, uh, which is why I brought up the central limit theorem in the first place. We're gonna revisit that and remind ourselves that the central, mil the central limit theorem states that the distribution of the sample approximates a normal distribution, also known as the bell curve, as the sample size becomes larger, assuming that all the samples are identical in size and regardless of the population distribution of shape. And that is it for um, empirical bootstrap. Thank you for watching this video.